Himstock just reported Q2 earnings that beat analyst estimates across virtually every single metric from revenue to earnings per share to guidance. And despite the major outperformance, the stock fell about 5% the following day, leaving a lot of investors scratching their heads, wondering what is going on with the stock. So today I'm going to go through the company's Q2 results, why the stock is down and what I'm doing with my Hims position considering that the stock is now down 36% from its recent highs. Also, you can read my latest article on HIMSS, which just went live yesterday, and the article goes into much more detail. So if you're interested, you can find the link to that article in the description box below. And with that being said, let's take a look at HIMSS and HERS Q2 results. So my first impression with the company's earnings report is that this is probably one of, if not the strongest quarter the company has ever recorded since it went public. So Q2 revenue was $316 million, up 52% year over year, which was an acceleration from Q1's growth of 46%. So that's really good to see. This also beat the high end of management's guidance by $19 million and beat analyst estimates by $13 million. So top line numbers look fantastic and the company continues to be underestimated. And it's also worth noting that the recent launch of its GLP-1 injections drove six percentage points acceleration in revenue growth in Q2. And if you're unfamiliar, GLP-1 is a type of weight loss drug that has gained a lot of attention lately. So previously, GLP-1 drugs were offered under brand names like Ozempic and Wegovy. I think that's how I pronounce it which I believe are owned by the big pharma Novo Nordisk, and they're extremely expensive, costing nearly $2,000 per month for patients. However, due to supply shortages of these drugs, a bunch of smaller players have entered the market with copycat or compounded versions of these GLP-1 drugs at a fraction of the cost, while delivering pretty much the same level of efficacy as the branded medications that you can see right here. And so in the case of HIMSS and HERS, they are offering compounded GLP-1 injections at just $199 per month, which is much more accessible and affordable for the general population. And this is why this product has been ramping up very quickly as HIMSS is able to take advantage of this supply demand imbalance by offering a product at a much attractive price point. So to give you a little bit of perspective, HIMSS generated $316 million of revenue in Q2, excluding GLP-1 injections or contributions. HIMSS generated revenue north of $300 million in the quarter. That means the company generated around $15 million of revenue from GLP-1 injections alone. So considering that the company just launched GLP-1 injections on the 20th of May, that means HIMSS compounded GLP-1 drugs produced around $15 million of revenue in about 40 days until the end of the quarter on June 30th, which is a lot given how new it is. And it's just wild how big HIMSS GLP-1 drugs or injections can get in the short to medium term. And this is probably why management raised their guidance by more than $100 million for the full year of 2024, which also happens to destroy analyst estimates. And as you can see, the company now expects revenue of $380 million in Q2 and $1.4 billion in 2024, which is up 68% year over year and 61% year over year respectively. And what that also means is that revenue growth is expected to accelerate even further in the back half of the year, which just goes to show how strong execution have been and how strong demand have been, which is really exciting. That being said, even without the GLP-1 injections, HIMSS core offerings grew 46% year over year in Q2 to north of $300 million, which is still very strong. And that speaks a lot about the HIMSS platform. So moving on, growth was also driven by subscriber growth, which was nearly 1.9 million as of Q2, up 43% year over year. Higher net orders, which was slightly over 2.5 million in Q2, up 20% year over year. And higher average order values, which was $121 per order in Q2, up 27% year over year. 
So in other words, all KPIs are trending upwards, which shows how strong business momentum has been. So in terms of profitability, the company's gross profit was 257 million in Q2, and this represents a gross margin of 81%, which declined by one percentage point year over year and quarter over quarter, as you can see right here. While falling gross margin is never a good thing, keep in mind that this was due to the higher costs associated with launching new products, particularly its new weight loss offering, which is still early in its life cycle. But over time, gross margin should revert back up as the weight loss category or any other new categories scale further, so I don't see any red flags here. More importantly, HIMS continues to gain operating leverage with net income and adjusted EBITDA margins improving 7 percentage points year over year and this was mainly due to marketing leverage with marketing expenses as a percentage of revenue declining 5 percentage points year over year from 56% to 46% in Q2. In addition, management also raised their full year adjusted EBITDA guidance by $20 million at the high end to $155 million in 2024, which should result in an adjusted EBITDA margin of about 11%. But more impressively, HIMS produced $48 million of free cash flow as, as seen by the gray bar right here in Q2, representing a free cash flow margin of 15%, which improved 10 percentage points year over year. This is despite investing heavily into its weight loss offering with minimal contribution from GLP-1 since it's still a small part of the overall business. So just imagine what this, what its free cash flow profile will look like once its weight loss offering scales further. So overall, HIMS had a spectacular quarter. Uh, revenue growth accelerated and is expected to accelerate further in the back half of the year. Profits continue to compound with margins improving year over year and free cash flow is at record highs with zero debt on its balance sheet. But the best thing coming out of the report was the company's guidance, which was raised by more than $100 million. More than $100 million, which is absolutely insane and I, sh I think it shouldn't be taken lightly. And yet, despite the outperformance and crazy guidance, him stock sold off the following day, which brings me to my next topic. Why is him stock down so much and what is causing the sell off? As I see it, I think we can blame a few reasons for this. First, Hunter Brook, an investigative reporting and global breaking news outlet, recently released a short report on HIMS, which sent the stock tumbling more than 7%. I'm not gonna go through the entire report here, but in a nutshell, the report claimed that HIMS and HERS is selling GLP-1 injections that is not FDA proof from quote-unquote shady supplier. So the report went on to say that HIMS could suffer legal liability if GLP-1 knockoffs prove unsafe, ineffective, or violate a big pharma patent, which I totally agree with. However, if you read the entire report, which I recommend if you haven't done so, the report is just nonsensical and borderline unethical with how Hunter Brook manipulates some of the information in such a way that it makes it sound so extremely negative when in fact HIMSS is just trying to provide high quality medical care at affordable prices in a time when there's a huge shortage in GLP-1 drugs. Again, if you read the entire report, you'll understand what I mean, but regardless, it did a good job in selling off the stock which is what shorts ultimately want. Now, another reason why the stock sold off is due to Big Pharma's GLP-1 shortage seemingly coming to an end, which means consumers are likely to return to Big Pharma to get their drugs, which could negatively affect HIMS sales. At the same time, sales of HIMS GLP-1 compounds could run the risk of being curtailed or banned altogether. For instance, Australia recently banned the sales of GLP-1 replicas or knockoffs due to safety concerns. So now that the shortage is over or almost over, the FDA may, I'm not saying it will, but it may ban the sales of GLP-1 replicas, which is what HIMSS is currently offering. And as you know, much of the stocks rally was driven by the GLP-1 hype and much of its guidance include contribution from GLP-1 sales. So if the FDA bans HIMSS from selling its weight loss products, 
the stock could be severely punished. And I think that is being priced in right now. So these three reasons, the Hunter Brooks short report, the GLP-1 drugs, being taken off the shortage list and a possible ban on the sales of GLP-1 knockoffs or replicas are probably causing the sell-off in the stock. On the bright side, Hims' growth story never actually hinges on GLP-1 drugs. It is a plus and a catalyst for sure, but Hims' investment thesis does not depend on the success or failure of its GLP-1 offerings. And fortunately for us, the investment thesis on Hims remains 100% intact considering that its core business outside of GLP-1 drugs are doing exceptionally well, growing 46% year-over-year in Q2. And without the GLP-1 injectors, HIMS pretty much produced record revenue, record subscribers, and record free cash flow. So that speaks volumes about the company's incredible value proposition, its durable brand mode, as well as management's strong execution. Having said that, what am I doing with my HIMS position? Well, as you know, HIMS is my largest position in my portfolio, but I won't shy away from adding to my winners. Why? Because I still see massive upside potential for HIMS stock, which is now trading at just three times its trailing 12-month revenue, which is incredibly cheap. And its EV to free cash flow multiple is just 36 times and more than 300% year over year in Q2. So this multiple is ridiculously cheap as well. And as for me, I have a base case 12 month price target of $33 a share for him stock, which is about double from its current price. So find me a company that is growing 50% plus, that has 80% plus gross margin, that has free cash flow margin of 15% plus, that is gap profitable, that has zero debt and that continues to blow expectation and that is only trading at about three times its revenue. I don't think you can find this kind of value in the market today, which is why I recently added to my HIMS position. So in short, I think HIMS is still severely undervalued. There are risks, of course, but I think the risk to reward heavily favors the bulls. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, please leave a like and comment and subscribe to my channel for more investment content like this. Now I want to hear from you. What do you think about HIMS Q2 results? What do you think about the stock right now and are you adding to your position? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you want to follow my um, portfolio, you can do so by subscribing to Savvy Trader, which I will leave the link in the description box below. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.